defense. He played Walford last year. Um, most would say that you're, you're probably as adept as anybody at stopping it, but you've got a lot of freshmen that are, that are going to be seeing it for the first time. How comfortable are you that you'll have those guys ready for what they'll see on Saturday? Well, I mean, we're going to have our guys ready uh, without question. Uh, comfortable is usually never a word that we use with uh, <laughs> uh, the option. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of work to do. You know, we got a lot of work to do is what I'd say. You got to start at ground zero uh, every year. Obviously, it's great when you have guys that have been, you know, experienced and exposed to it in the past. And we have, certainly we have uh, some guys that have, uh, but we also have to, you know, bridge the gap for a number of other players, particularly just overall in our 2D. So um, you got to get sharpened up, sharpened up, um, so to speak, you know, as a coaching staff first, and then be able to, you know, be great, great teachers of the game and uh, schemes and all of those things to our guys and get them to buy in, you know, to what they have to do, you know, just the discipline and the physicality and, um, you know, the consistency that you got to play with all the, the little details of it. So um, it's exciting though. That's a, you know, it's just a challenge. And as coaches, you love that. That's a unique challenge as we all know. And, um, you know, one that, uh, you know, I know our guys will be excited about. Anybody have anything else for Coach Venables? Coach, they, they, they struggled against uh, offensively against UCF uh, the other night. Uh, but, you know, they last year they, they put up 320 rush yards against Georgia Tech. They've got a, a veteran quarterback in, in Rainey who was preseason FCS um, All-American. What, what, what do you expect to see from him? Well, I know going into the year they felt like they had to use, to use their words, their staff's words, was a championship uh, team coming back. And um, so I think they had 9 of 11 guys coming back on offense and maybe 8 of 11 back on defense. And – uh, you know, a, a really good scheme and system. And I think uh, I know, that, you know the game was, uh, you know, a one score game, uh, you know, for a good portion of the game. Uh, last week, they had a couple of critical turnovers. The guy just spits the ball out. Uh, I think they had maybe three fumbles and an interception, but it was a wet night, uh, damp and misty. And um, so probably doesn't work in their favor when they felt like they had to throw the ball uh, later on in the game. But, uh, you know, right away they went right down the field um, uh, on South Florida. And uh, so scheme-wise, it looks like they feel, you know, pretty comfortable with what they're doing. Uh, some of the new guys they've had to fill in. And, um, you know, again, the, you know, Randy's a really good player. He's got a really good receiver. Uh, their all-time receiver, a leading receiver there. And, transfer uh, on their offensive line from South Carolina and again an experienced group of guys overall um, so you know experience and running the option is a big deal and uh, so again just expect it again they had the right mindset uh, against and when we played them last time here in our stadium you know they their first you know four or five plays man they just gave it right to us man flat back put Christian Wilkins on his back on the first play of the game and just mowed us down and uh, with all those NFL guys up there. So they'll, they'll be, you know, incredibly excited to, to play. And, uh, again, our guys are going to have to have, right, have the right mindset, you know, and uh, get their nose bloody and play with a flat back. And, you know, this will be, you know, a, a great physical test for us. Hey, Brent, uh, this, is, this is Larry. Uh, you anticipate DK will be available this week? I hope so. Um, so we'll see unless somebody tells me uh, he won't be. So never know what the availability is by by the end of the week. Coach, it's Trevor again. After being able to watch the film of Saturday night's game, uh, just uh, what what were you pleased with and and disappointed with? Um, you know, as much as anything, just first of all, pleased with having the opportunity to play. And uh, our effort was, you know, terrific. Um, saw some marked improvement with some of the returning players uh, from a year ago uh, that were here. Thought our guys were aggressive and physical up front. Thought our front seven uh, really played well. Thought, 
that, you know, uh, I think we, we controlled the game from the onset. And, um, again, we, we did a good job of disrupting things. I think we had 11, 11 tackles for loss, six sacks, uh, played pretty good on third down. I think they were uh, around the 30% range. And, you know, we're just off a little bit on a, on a couple of other third downs that felt like we should have defended a little bit better, been a little bit more precise. Um, there's a lot of really good um, plays uh, from our secondary. And uh, we got some other things that, again, where they made some plays and, and uh, you know, it looks, I think we got to get over the top a couple times. It looks like it's the corner getting beat, but we're actually in cover two. We just got to get, you know, our safety over the top a little quicker. And, uh, you know, I th again, as we were talking about going into the game, you know, for three straight years, they've been a top five team in place per game. So the tempo and the pace is really fast. I think, I think we've been, uh, had a false sense of security of what Wake Forest is like the last couple of years we've played them. They've actually played a really slow, close to the vest uh, type of game. And they did everything but that. I think the other thing that everybody needs to be mindful of is, uh, you know, they're going to come out and do some things that maybe you haven't worked on, you haven't had on tape. And, and so, so, so for a few of those guys that are playing football for the first time, starting in a college game, uh, you're going to put you on your heels a little bit. Uh, just very, that's very natural, very normal. And, um, but I thought some guys were maybe a little bit overexcited um, uh, from a fundamental and technique standpoint and kind of lost the, the composure uh, that you got to have so that you can play sound within the scheme and uh, don't try to do too much. And so if, if you're disappointed in anything, it's just guys, you know, just ha having a little bit better poise, uh, a few snaps here and there, and um, doing a better job on some of the play passes. Again, not trying to do too much. We let a guy, a couple guys get behind us, um, one with just bad eyes, bad discipline, again, with some guys that are, again, just – uh, some of the backup guys, second and third team guys, and then uh, just fundamentally, um, you know, not using, utilizing the help that you have and losing your leverage and the coverage. So uh, I, th I think we let the ball spit out a couple of times outside of us, being a little bit overly aggressive at setting the edge. And and uh, so again, I think it's great. I think I think you know, there's going to be tremendous growth through both the good and building confidence and um, chemistry and momentum and, and, uh, you know, as well as, you know, you improve, uh, through the failure, you know, it's great to have things put on tape so that you can teach and, and, and guys can learn from. And, uh, you know, the tempo, uh, was probably uh, something our guys were a little bit surprised with when you're in the middle of it. And then, uh, I would say, you know, the aggressiveness, uh, you know, when we're, we're looking at situational football and some of the things that they've done in the past, and then they come out and they do something just the opposite. I think that might have caught a player or two here or there, uh, caught some guys off guard. And um, so, but overall, uh, super pleased. Again, played, you know, a ton of guys, uh, virtually everybody that got on, you know, the airplane. And, uh, and again, a bunch of guys got their first start. And um, I think, we, again, we had nine guys that started their first college game. And uh, so for us to go on the road against a conference opponent um, that, again, I think won nine games a year ago with most of those guys returning, you know, Sage Surratt uh, and the, the opposite receiver didn't play from our game, you know, on. And after us, they beat Duke and lost a tight one uh, against Syracuse in overtime. They had a chance to win their bowl game. They lost 27-21 to Michigan State. But, uh, you know, they you know they had a, a good amount of guys coming back. And, um, and so, again, just really pleased with just, again, from the onset of taking control of the game, fighting through some adversity when we did give up a play here or there. Just, again, just that, got to have better situational awareness on third and eighteen. Uh, and you're in cloud coverage, you know, you, you can't, the last thing you can do is, uh, you know, let a guy get to the outside and get to the sideline and let him throw a whole shot in front of you. Just some stuff like that, that again, just will play a little bit smarter learning from those mistakes. And, um, and again, I think we missed, uh, I think the tackling overall for the night was really pretty good, but we missed 
uh, a couple of in the box tackles where the guy bounced outside of us and then um, we had the one seam ball there in the second half early on in the second half they hit the seam ball and and um, we, we had a safety in the corner that bounced off each other and we, McGuire does a great job hustling backside and gets him down but uh, got to be better you know had, had the had the PI on fourth and, and uh, along there to give him the last chance for a last touchdown. And just prior to that, you know, we hit the guy out of bounds late on uh, third and long. We got, we, we were holding them there. So, you know, really that the last touchdown is something that we really had a chance to, to keep them out of the end zone. And uh, it's unfortunate, but we'll learn from those situations as well, but really proud of and pleased, uh, excited about, a lot of young players that really flashed, uh, that really played uh, really well. And um, whether it's guys up front or guys in the back end, um, you know, again, they had a bunch of double moves uh, along with that tempo. And again, our guys handled those, you know, really pretty well. And um, so uh, really pleased with that. Got, again, got plenty of things we got to get better and improve again, just, uh, just playing sound and discipline and again fundamentally uh, the right way <clears throat> and, um, and and guys will do that this is a developmental game and, and that's how you get better uh, you know is through repetition and and uh, so get some guys to get the first game jitters out outside of them and, and uh, but uh, really pleased with uh, just to, again overall effort Grant this is Matt Connolly with this day you, you mentioned developmental game just what have you seen from Reagan Upshaw and the way he developed uh, from when he first arrived to being a guy now that can seems like he can help you guys yeah so again hadn't played football ever in his life until he came here and played linebackers first uh, three years and then we moved him to DN played a little bit and a few blowouts last year and then to see his development from late in the spring to to where it is now man it it's a complete and total transformation. You know, Lemansky's done a great job in, in coaching him and bringing him, him along from a fundamental and uh, scheme standpoint. And then Reagan's put in a lot of work. High motor, uh, explosive, tremendous first step, very powerful, can really run. And he's got, you know, he's got concrete in his helmet, heavy handed. Um, again, just a high motor guy, great team player. A really good leader for us, so I'm um, excited about him, and, and uh, he's going to really uh, be a critical part, you know, what we're doing this year. Brent Lou Bajak from State. Um, what did, as far as Miles Murphy's performance, uh, what how impressed were you with that, and just his development since he arrived uh, back in January to now? Just so, what what have you seen from him? Yeah, really excited about Miles. You know, he's got so much natural ability. Um, you know, he's not only a refined pass rusher, but still getting better. He's got plenty of things he's got to improve at. And, um, but he's so powerful and, and physical. You know, most young players, that's the last piece that comes is that physicality standpoint. And that's not been a problem since day one. Uh, super ultra physical, loves to be, to put his face in the middle of it. And a uh, heavy handed kid. Um, Got a great motor, um, very cerebral, and um, just very intelligent. You know, for him to pick up what he's picked up um, is really pretty remarkable, to be honest. But uh, uh, can run and uh, very humble, let you coach him hard. And, um, and again, he still has, you know, you know tremendous growth potential uh, from a mental standpoint and a development, you know, skill-wise. And, uh, but great work ethic and, um, like I said, tremendous humility. Um, you know, was disruptive the other night. And, again, I think he'll be a guy that I believe will get better and better and better the more he plays. Just because he works hard, not just because it naturally happens for him. You still got to work uh, and develop it. And uh, so that starts in your in the weight room and the practice habits and the film room and things of that nature. You can't just have talent. You got to, you know, again, you have to have the intelligence and the fundamentals that go along with it. And then you can be a great player. And uh, you know, I use a guy like, like Logan Rudolph that um, was talented, but maybe he wasn't talented with some of the physical traits, you know, and, and length, uh, things of that nature. But what a 
terrific college football player he was because he was a detailed guy, effort guy, intelligent, uh, strong in his own right, pound for pound. But, you know, when you have that refinement in all of those little things and the fundamentals and how you fit in the defense and things of that nature, it lets you play to a whole nother level of aggressiveness and confidence that comes along with that. And um, so that'll, that'll come through over time for, for miles. And, and you really have seen it, you know, from him, he had a little period uh, early on in camp that maybe it was, uh, you know, where they might hit, he might hit a wall. Um, and uh, he'd probably be able to talk about that more, but, um, but really just seeing him trained in the right way. He's still a, pretty hot stock I'd buy all day, uh, even at a higher price uh, with him, because I think there's tremendous, tremendous growth uh, that's still to come uh, with Miles. Brent, uh, this is Larry Williams again. Um, you've been around a long time. How often have you seen guys show up as physically developed as Miles is, as, as Brzee is, and even, even Capehart? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> not, you don't see it very much. Uh, that's that's um, that goes without saying. You know, a guy like like Dexter was, you know, as game ready uh, as we've had, and those guys would fit right there probably with with you know Christian was a little bit different. His fundamentals uh, weren't probably quite there. He had played offensive line and defensive line and used his. Uh, flippers and his forms a lot more than you know just striking with his hands and you know your D lineman man you gotta lead with your with your hands and so that had to come you know for Christian Christian had that ultra athletic ability for a big guy you know and could really bend it was bouncy but probably not quite as twitchy as as uh, Brzee and um you know, Cleveland came you know as whatever he was the 90 90th rated D end in, in high school uh, whatever that means, but he had so much physical development and just mental development and became, you know, an incredible college player. Miles, uh, as Coach Sweeney likes to say, you know, is one of those guys that you just add water to. And, um, you know, with the length, the size, the speed, uh, some of the refinement with still more refinement to come and the physicality as well. So, it, you know, it's not very often that it happens, but you, you know it when you see it. And, uh, you know, and then, and then, you know, Capehart's a big body athletic guy that's still got a lot of the fundamental things to work through and, uh, you know, uh, the mental side, just still learning and things of that nature. But uh, Brian and, and Miles in particular, um, you know, again, both guys that, again, have a super attitude first and foremost. Their, their mind's right. They're workers. Uh, they're quick learners. They have, again, very – uh, little egos and um, and just great teammates and um, so with the, with the talent and the, and the ability so um, they still got plenty and I don't I think both of them uh, from a grade standpoint there's plenty of guys that graded higher like you would expect and uh, but uh, we're really excited about them and then combined with the other you know experience and the other players that we have you know feel like that we have a chance to be better, you know, um, particularly up front and uh, in that front seven than what we just built a little bit different than what we were a year ago. I think there were a couple of times when Miles was engaged with a blocker and then was able to quickly disengage and then get a ball carrier down from behind. Is that something that's impressive to you uh, and maybe yeah. rare? Yeah, no, I mean, it's one thing for guys to say, hey, man, look, I got my gap, you know, I'm over here, you know, doing my job. But, you know, I'm with you. That's it's great that you, you saw that, you know, the escape is the final piece of the play, you know, so you can make a play and, uh, you know, do all those things that get you to a position to take on a block. Now you got to whoop the block and now you make the play and that's what the good players know how to do. And uh, to be able to finish a guy off and escape violently, escape so that you can make a play. And then you know, as you the closer you get to the ball, the the faster all that has to happen. There's less margin for error. So that's why really D lineman is uh, is a harder position to come in and play right away uh, because of that. 
you know, the margin for error is so small, whether it's your, your feet, you know, your first step, your hand placement, your eyes, if it's off, man, you're going to get destroyed. In the back end, you could back there at safety and have all kinds of bad footwork and all that, but still have a chance to recover, you know, because the ball's not going to be on top of you as quick. And uh, so, yeah, that's impressive, you know. Um, and he, that's the standard now that he showed us he could do that, expect him to do it all the time. But, uh, no, he uh, – um, again, there's a lot of uh, fine plays. And, again, there's, there's going to be plenty that, you know, he knows he can get better at, needs to get better at and improve. But uh, that was a great example of a guy that's really confident in what he's doing out there and, and skilled as well. Coach, it's Trevor again. I, I don't imagine Miles has faced uh, many triple option offenses, if any. Um, how well do you think he'll, he'll be able to stay disciplined, set the edge, and you know, for a, a pass <laughs> like him? <laughs> No, that's not a, it's not a bad question. That's a great question, but we don't know yet. And, uh, cause it's, you know, by the time we get to this first meeting and then go through the week of practice and then you get to game day, it's when you're really going to, uh, have a good feel for it. But to be honest, it's, a uh, you know, you never really feel like I said, we started as a, you never really feel comfortable, uh, you know, because you re realize, that, you know, every play or they'll 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 be again you know sharks with blood in the water a bunch of uh you know they'll they'll they'll, they'll come after you in a heartbeat you know if you got uh you know a weak sister up front that's not you know playing within the confines of the system and doing the little things right so i mean again if you said what based on his track record do you feel good that he'll yeah i do because he's not a, a freelance player you know uh, if you want him to spill it, he's done a good job of, of, you know, stepping in line. If you want him to stay outside, he's done that as well. Uh, you know, so, I, I, you know, he's in the position he is uh, because he's been a disciplined player, you know, knows how to play the game. So we just got to tra transition these guys to a little bit different style, you know, for this game. Hey, Brent, it's Anna Hickey with 24-7 Sports. I know you were talking about just having multiple first-year guys starting. What did you think of Landon Zanders in his first year, his first game? Yeah, but, um, we were super excited about Landon. Um, you know, he graded uh, over 80%, really played well. Um, uh, you know, he's got great range. Um, uh, he's, he's a good tackler. He's got really good instincts, uh, good coverage ability. And again, for the things, the stress that uh, this offense put, you know, on these guys, whether it's again procedurally um, with tempo and you know formations and just a lot of the exotic things that they do, a lot of double moves and a lot of stress in that back end. You know what a team like Wake does is they put you in conflict a lot, and they because of their 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 uh, a run based offense with all the RPOs, you know. Not every play is a run, but about 70% of the first and second downs, maybe a little bit higher, you know, 70 plus percent of the first and second downs are all called runs with pass concepts off of it. And so procedurally uh, and schematically that what they do is they put those secondary players on an island. They're very much like a triple option team would uh, where you're in zero coverage and, uh, you know, you, everybody underneath is required to stop the run. And if you lose one player, you're going to be soft. And then they get you on your heels and then you can't do anything right. And uh, so you got to take away what they do best. And, uh, you know, so a very under, you know, looking at it from that standpoint, you can't got to be careful with some of the coverages that you do. And uh, you can't, you can't, you got to play them a little bit different or, you know, you're going to stay on the field. They're going to score points. And, um uh, but, but, you know, understanding that they've got to also uh, play with some high stress calls and very high stress calls without a lot of help. And um, so there's a lot of space. Space is not your friend uh, on the football field. If you're a defensive player, you know, you want to take the air out of things, out of, out of the ball, uh, certainly in routes and in coverage, you, you don't want a lot of space. You got high skilled players that you want to, you want to be able to crowd them and, uh, you know, not allow them to, to, you know, work leverage and things of that nature. So, um, but getting back to Landon, man, super pumped about his future. And, and again, overall, uh, he played well the other night and, and, you know, he's got a few plays he'd like to get back. 
uh, but they're most of the time, most games, you're going to have a few, even if you, you play at a really high level, you're going to say, yeah, but I should have. I wish I could get that one play back or those two plays back. So that's just, that's just the name of the game. When you step into the arena, that's, that's going to be part of the experience. We'll take two more for Coach. Ren, I believe Davo said Tyler and Rook were getting MRIs yesterday. Do you have any idea, um, an update on those guys? I, I don't. Hey, Coach Venables, this is Grace Rayner with The Athletic. Um, I'm just curious, when when you guys do have these rare freshmen, how long does it usually take for you to identify that they are indeed pretty different? Uh, probably that first day or two uh, in pads. I mean, they're always going to stand out, you know, in shorts. But um, you add the physical side of it. Once you put the pads on, if they're still standing out usually, uh, that's when you – definitively know um, that they not only skill wise, but from a physicality wise, because again, it's a physical, whether you're a receiver, you're a corner, you're a nose guard, or you're a linebacker, you know, there's the physical element has always got to go along, you know, with the skill development. And, and um, so, you know, usually a few days into being in pads, you figure out if somebody really stands out, it's a little bit different. 